Well, I've been banging on in previous videos about doing an interview with a guy that's had a very different retirement from the rest of us. Obviously, COVID has delayed things a lot, and I do like to do things on a face-to-face -face basis, but needs must. So I'm delighted to say he's with us today, although not actually in the studio, but he's here. Welcome to Grey Matters. Welcome to Grey Matters, the channel that promotes the fact that the older generation still matters and looks at issues that matter to the older generation. Now, when Steve Ghost and his wife Sue decided to retire, there was no bowls club and gardening for them. No, instead they bought a caravan, they put their uh, house up for rent, they put their possessions into storage, and they spent the next eight years touring Europe in what they called their adventure before dementia, which Steve documented in a fascinating blog. They're now starting out on a new adventure before dementia, and I'm delighted to welcome Steve at last to Grey Matters. Hello, Steve. Hello, <laughs> Hello to you, sir. So the first question really has got to be why it started a couple of years before four years before we were at dinner christmas dinner with some friends and and the local rotary club and <clears throat> we were sitting opposite a chap who ran a big news agency business he worked from four o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock at night Oh. six days a week and on the seventh oh, wow. day he worked till about four o'clock or five o'clock in the afternoon um and <clears throat> we questioned him about this and and he said oh yes yeah. said but he said when i retire and i've only got so many years to go he said i could do anything i want he said i'm really looking forward to it and six months later he's dead oh. and but it just boom, gone. Yeah. And later that year, uh, I was doing a, a yacht masters course because I was heavily into sailing at the time. One of the guys, he was retiring. I think it was January the first. He got a, a little boat that he'd had for years that he really hadn't used. He was getting a bit of theoretical knowledge so that when he retired on January the first. He'd be able to go off sailing and do all the things that work had stopped yeah. to give himself a little bit of extra money he elected to work over christmas drop dead at his drop dead on his desk gone I can so where he said <laughs> exactly that is exactly where he's going we said look life's too short we've got to do something Sue had got herself a job up in Lancashire from Essex and it was 2008, the bottom of the housing market, the, the, the prices of, uh, of houses was plummeting. So we thought, well, we're not going to sell at the bottom of the market. We'll rent our house in Essex and we will use the income to rent in Blackpool. So when the job's finished, and it was only a couple of years till retirement, when the job's finished, we can go back to the house or do what we want. But when Sue decided to retire, we'd already got tenants in our house. We'd already, six months before, bought our first ever brand new caravan. And <clears throat> um, we were in a house where we only had to give a month's notice. So we spent that month clearing out, getting rid of what stuff we didn't want, all the rest got put into storage. We bought a, a, a storage container, shipping container, and moved into the caravan, and off we went. And that was that. that that's, a, that's a huge leap of faith. I mean, did you, did you plan your first trip when you went out there? Did you know where you were going and the route you were taking and what you were going to do when you got there? We've always got to have some sort of objective. We can't wa wander 
mm. without a reason to want. So we decided we would follow the Rhine from Amsterdam right the way through Germany to Lake Constance, right. where, the, where the, the right, everything comes into Lake Constance. And then the Rhine starts from there uh, and goes through. Um, you're dragging up memories on having to work hard at these. <laughs> <laughs> and it is before it's, dementia too. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long time ago. We never knew quite where we were going mm. at the end of the day. Um, people said we were mad, stupid or, or whatever. We used to pick out a campsite, put it in the navigator and go. And that was as far as we got to planning. When you, you know, you, you did that first trip and you found your campsites and you stayed in a few places. Was the plan to just carry on staying out there doing it? Or were you said, we'll do that trip and then we'll come home and maybe go out again. I mean, how did that work? The, the idea on that trip was to follow the Rhine to, to the Bodensee or Lake Constance, as we call it. Then we were going to go over the Alps, down to the Med, turn right, and follow it through into Spain. Right. And we were going to spend the winter in Spain. However, when we arrived in Switzerland, we had a problem with the caravan toilets. But we, <laughs> we needed to get it sorted. It was still under guarantee. So we went back. We went back to UK. Uh, what had taken us three or four months to get out to, we got back in two days, I think it was. Wow. Back into UK, the company we bought the caravan from fixed it. First weekend we were back, I think. And we booked a ferry from uh, Portsmouth, I think, uh, across to... I've been so many times on that ferry, I can't remember where we went to, but it, it was... Um, Spain? Down into Spain. Yeah. <laughs> Down into Spain. <laughs> you can't get a ferry to Portugal. All oh, right. We got into Spain, so it was it was either uh, Santander or, or or Bilbao. It was Bilbao because we drove right the way along the coast, the northern coast. We dropped south, and we got to the Portuguese border. At which point, I said to Sue. Never been to Portugal, don't want to go to Portugal, not interested in going to Portugal. I reckon we can go through Portugal in a couple of days. Three months later, we were still there. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the attraction <laughs> then? Was it, was it just you liked it or there was a lot to see? I mean, what happened? Uh, a, a, a quick example, very first supermarket we went into, we helped ourselves to a big bag of prawns. We put everything onto the conveyor belt. There was a lady being served in front of us and she just put her card into the machine to pay for it. And the cashier got up and walked off. And we thought, what's going on? A minute or two later, the girl came back. What we hadn't noticed that as she'd left, she'd grabbed our prawns and gone and weighed them. Oh. But, it was so laid back. The whole thing was so laid back. Nobody worried about, oh, you haven't, you haven't weighed those prawns. You need to go and weigh those prawns. And the lady didn't get upset that she, she just put it in. And, mm. and the whole country is so friendly, easygoing, and, and get on very well with Brits because they've got a, a long, long history. Mm. And, of course, they made fabulous wine. And oh, port. Of yes, of course. <laughs> uh, but that's where you wintered normally, wasn't it, in Portugal? We wintered in Portugal. It was cold at night and you needed the heating on at night. But during the day, it was, well, as far as I'm concerned, it was shirt sleeves. Oh, nice. The sun shone. Occasionally you'd get bad weather. Yeah. We had some relatives come over to stay for a week. And it started raining as the plane came into land and it didn't stop until their plane took off a week later. Uh, but that was a rare, yeah. a rare, rare incident. Uh, for the last, I don't know how many years, our Christmas dinner and our New Year's Eve dinner have both been cooked on a barbecue. Uh, and Sue has 
got into a routine of going paddling on Christmas morning. Nice. I've done it for years. Yeah. So, so <laughs> with, with your um, with your winters sorted out, um, I mean, where else did you go? I mean, Spain, presumably Germany. We used to go down to Sport, Portugal and Spain because they catered for the greyhound. Oh, uh, yes. Apart from the north of Spain and the very north of, of Portugal, all the campsites were open. Mm. All the campsites got full facilities. Uh, all the restaurants were open. All the bars were open. Everything was go. Whereas, in, you know, you'd think that Greece would be a perfect place. Yes. But they don't cater for the, or they didn't then, cater for the Greyhound. No. Well, I know we, we went to the Marathon Coast uh, in Greece <coughs> just as the season, holiday season was ending. It officially was still going. Everywhere was closed. We struggled. Exactly. They, they weren't even maintaining yeah. the swimming pool at the hotel. That was green and scummy. We found yeah. one Taverna that was open, so we ate there every day. <laughs> well, because of that, we went south for the winter, and then in the summer, we went to other places. One summer we spent in Scandinavia. Oh. Uh, one summer we spent in Poland. One summer we spent in Scotland. The big problem there was we were there for three months oh. and it rained every day but three. We were supposed to stay there for another month, I think, but we just couldn't cope with it any longer. Mm. We went to, I think I said, um, Switzerland earlier, uh, Scandinavia, which was fabulous. We went across Denmark to Copenhagen, which is one of my favourite cities in, in Europe. Because the Danes are quite have quite a, a good sense of humour, but they cannot understand why the Little Mermaid is so popular. If you go on a, on a boat trip around the the, uh, the river there, they go in and they come back. So the last thing you see is the Little Mermaid, right? But they do it in such a way that it's suddenly there, and they do a big build up, and there's this tiny little. <laughs> <laughs> But it is fair, it's well worth going to see. With all the countries you've been, are, it, did you notice a difference in the way they, they catered generally for caravans or the roads or the, the, I mean, are the countries better for caravanning than others? I, it, it wasn't during this trip, but I did take a caravan to the Ukraine. And when I got back, the caravan went straight to that great caravan site in the sky. Right. Because... <laughs> The roads have just shaken the whole thing to pieces. Uh, <laughs> right. But I, I have driven in Ukraine since, and they're not so bad, to be, <laughs> to be fair. Some of Portuguese roads are pretty strange. Mm. In the great, the great earthquake of 14, whatever it was, they had millions and millions of tons of rubble with the buildings collapsed that they didn't know what to do with. So they built roads and pavements out of it. They don't need to set a speed limit when you're driving along those roads because <laughs> to go imagine. over 30 miles an hour, it just, it, it rattles your teeth. <laughs> so, Polish roads are pretty good. The only time we came a cropper was we were on a, a main road, a main arterial road, and it suddenly changed to cobbles. Oh, right. And we drove across these cobbles, must have been 20, 30 kilometres. Wow. And then it went back to, to tarmac again. How weird. It was weird. And then when we set up, the fridge wouldn't work. <laughs> what had happened, it, it had upset the Freon in, in the, the fridge so much oh. that we had to give it 36 hours all to come down again. Yeah. And then it started working, never a problem again. You you learn by doing, but you're in that great position now that everyone else can is able to benefit from your knowledge. So, if someone said to you, "Right, we're going to now go out in our caravan and tour Europe." What sort of two or three pieces of advice would you give them? Make sure you've got a long time to do it. Right. The reason being is that 
when we went, we could go into Europe and we could essentially stay there for as long as we wanted. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons we, we packed it up, if you go into Europe after Brexit, as a person, mm. you can only stay there visa-free for 90 days yeah. in any 180. If you take a car in a caravan, you can only stay there for 60 days in any 180 without transferring the number to a local registration number. Right. But then after another 30 days, you've got to go anyway. You've also got to <clears throat> have international driving licenses now. But you need, I think, three. One serves you for most of Europe. <coughs> one serves you for Spain. Mm -hmm. And the one I didn't get was somewhere remote, so I didn't bother. Right. You've also got back a green card. Oh, yes. Right. Your insurance company will give you a green card. You've only got to ask them. Yeah. But you've got to make sure that you get it marked as A for the car. And I think it's F for the caravan. The other thing when you're traveling in Europe to remember to research all the little peccadilloes of the various countries. We, we met a chap on a campsite in Spain right. and I simply commented, oh, you haven't got reflectors on the back. I don't need reflectors. They're not going to stop and measure me. They've got better things to do. And off he went. Because in Spain, they require reflectors on the back of any vehicle or combination of vehicles mm. over 12 metres. Right. We happened to bump into him three or four months later. We said, how long are you staying for? I don't know. What's the matter with it? I'm waiting for my sister to send out the reflective boards <laughs> to go on the back of the caravan because he'd been stopped and measured. Mm. And they said, oh, while we're here, we'll write you another ticket out because you haven't got a GB sticker on the back. <laughs> Spain are very, very hot on that sort of thing. Um, they're also hot on towing little cars behind motorhomes. Oh, yeah. Um, because in, in Spain, by law, any vehicle that's not under its own power has to go on a trailer. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> well, that's the it, there, there's lots of other... Yeah. Um, it is all down to research, isn't it? I'm sure if uh, people are thinking about touring around Europe, we know, you know, there are going to be issues now that we're, we're out of the, the EU, but if people are thinking about it, I think then this conversation we've had and your blogs will definitely give people... Um, some more information and, and give them a, a bit of a guiding light what to do. I'll put links to those blogs and the website down below. And if you've got any questions for Steve, you'll be able to do that there. There will be links for you to ask questions and I'm sure you're going to be more than happy to give you any answers that you need. Thanks, Steve, very much. Uh, great talking to you. And uh, we'll see you again for the next uh, blog, which is going to be the second adventure before dementia. I won't give you away what it is, but it's what Steve has moved on to. So until then, it's um, chair for me and, and bye from Steve. Thanks, Steve. Bye.